Hey team, Blake here with Crushing Defeat Media. Welcome to the second video. Here we start with Dr. Curry explaining the 3-6 code type, which was the code type Amber came up as following one of the examinations she conducted. If you are enjoying these videos and you are not yet subscribed, now may be a good time to do so. Thank you so much for watching and let's get into it. The 3-6 code type is very concerned with their image, um, very attention seeking, uh, v very prone to externalizing blame to a point where uh, it's unclear whether they can even admit to themselves that they do have responsibility in certain areas. Another lengthy clip here, this one is from when it was played at the trial, but I think it's a really good example of externalizing blame and not taking responsibility. It's been going on too long, Albert. Hey, we just gotta stop this. Just gotta stop it. I don't know how to get my um, reputation back. We write a letter together. That means? Saying that we're gonna take this out of the public eye. Saying that we're gonna try and work this out on, on our own. Saying that the media has created such a fucking hateful storm that it's sickening that we love each other and that we want to make sure each other is okay. Have we had fights in the past? Have we had this or whatever? Fuck it, they already know all that shit. Don't matter. Here's the deal. No, it matters. It may, I, I have been... I have... That, you have no idea. Every ounce of my credibility has been taken from. I mean, and done so in a dishonest way. You know. Amber, it, for it, ab what, what, you know, the abuse, the abuse thing is 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 we've got to deal with that. Yeah. We've got to deal with that, don't Amber. Have any way of my credit is is my credibility. You know what I don't. And I, why I, did you put that out there? I did not. You forced me. Your team forced me to by going on the offense. I didn't force you to. I promise. Look up the timelines to these things. Everything is. Forget it. Forget it. You don't believe what I say. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. But I, I did not. I did not choose this. I, every step of the way has been an offense. I did I, not put this anywhere. I didn't. Uh, let me talk to the fucking team. I did not call the cops. I need to I.O. Called, called the cops. You told I.O. Yes, to call the cops. I did, not, I did not call the cops, and I did not give them any statement when they came. I've been trying to protect you. I you told I.O. to call the cops. When? When? While it, while it was happening? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because the last time that it got crazy between us, I really did think I was going to lose my life, and I thought you would do it on accident. And I told you that. I said, oh my god, I thought the first time. Amber, I, I lost oh, a fucking finger, man. Come on. I had a fucking, I had a fucking, a mineral can, a jar of can of mineral spirits thrown at my nose. I, I, you can please tell people that it was a fair fight and see what the, see what the jury and judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them, Johnny Depp. I just wanted to get the fuck Man, I, I'm a victim too of domestic violence, and yes. I know it's a fair fight. And see how many people believe or side with you. It doesn't matter if it's a fair, fair, fair fight. My ass. It, you know. Exactly. Because you're borderline personality disorder is a disorder of stability. It's instability, and it's instability in personal relationships. It's instability in their emotions. It's instability in their behavior. You realize that. It you know, in that kind of situation, a few minutes is fine, but then after a certain point, it becomes way worse and I become way harder to reason, to rationalize with. I become that Kipper can tell you, he says he's the same way. I just, I'll tell you, and we work a very different way. And it's instability in their sense of self and their identity. And that instability is really driven by this underlying terror of abandonment. Like all the trust is gone. All the trust is gone in the relationship because you keep splitting. I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation Don't. with you. So 
one of the key features also of this disorder, and you, you, all of it is like pistons of an engine kind of firing off and igniting one another. But when somebody is afraid of being abandoned by their partner or by anybody else in their environment and they have this disorder, they'll make desperate attempts to prevent that from happening. And those desperate attempts could be physical aggression, it could be threatening, it could be harming themselves. But these are behaviors that are usually very extreme and very concerning to the people around them. Amber complains to Johnny a lot about how he walks away from an argument or goes into a different room or goes to a different hotel room or goes to a different house. And I believe the root cause of this is what Dr. Curry is talking about. And it stems from that fear of abandonment. Really, when you split on me, how do you feel when I leave you? When I split, I've left when I go into the other room, you said. And getting me a room, I mean, getting another room in a hotel is just the same thing. When did I get another room at hotel? You uh, text Stephen or, or Nathan in Toronto to get you another room. It's chronic. It happens all the time. And if you do it to go into another room, you do it and you get dressed. You were fucking screaming at me. I'm not going to validate my actions last night. I feel very bad. No, I'm talking in Toronto. I, I did not start screaming until you had fucking said all this shit. You poke an animal enough, it is eventually, doesn't matter how friendly it is, how cool. True. Sadly, it's counteractive, right? So the thing these people fear most is being abandoned, but over time, the anger, the explosive anger that they show when somebody is uh, needing space or when somebody's really not doing anything wrong, because a lot of times they read into things that they perceive as being a slight to them or being somebody intending to harm them that actually isn't happening. They'll exaggerate it. Oh, I see. You know, I, I wore a dress to an event once and I felt beautiful in it. <laughs> like, stupid as that sounds, I, I felt pretty in this dress I picked out. And I showed it him because, I, you know, it's a carpet. It's red carpet. So it's like, you know, pu publicized. And I kind of thought it was weird. He didn't, he wasn't saying anything about it. You know, I left him to go do this red carpet. And I was like, did you see the the you know, the event I went to, you know, basically I just, I, I, I felt pretty and I thought like, did you see that? You know, I wanted him to say something about that, I guess. <laughs> and, um, and he said, well, this is after he stopped talking to me for some time, didn't tell me why when he came back in my life, he wouldn't explain why he was acting different. He just kind of acted mad at me. I didn't know what I had done wrong. I know this can be a big deal not to say anything, but it could also be blowing that a bit out of proportion. What do you think? Um, and they'll explode. They'll react in this heightened manner that is just exhausting for their partners. Oftentimes their partners will uh, try to make them happy at first and really allow themselves to be a punching bag, thinking that they can somehow solve this problem, that somehow they can make this better. And eventually it just overwhelms them. Look, you do whatever you feel you have to do. I'm telling you now it's a mistake to go to court. But if you want to go to court, we'll go to court. I would rather, I would rather take care of it a different way. I think it would, it would, be very good for you and I think it would be very good for me. With uh, borderline personality disorder, you're having these fluctuating moods constantly. And again, this hypersensitivity to being slighted or feeling offended, really driven by the fear that if you're offended or slighted, if the therapist comes in two minutes late or if somebody shows up to dinner two minutes late, that they might be abandoning you. And it's not as if the borderline is considering themselves abandoned in that moment, but they just know that they have this overwhelming emotion and there are no attempts to control that emotion. There's no, there are no attempts to regulate it. So if they're in the middle of the restaurant and they feel offended, they're going to start the fight. Three fucking wheeled truck of a marriage. Why don't we crash it straight into the wall? Because no one knows us better than fucking Travis. You're just afraid that the truth will come out. What truth? That you lied. What are you fucking talking? 
talking about? I didn't fucking even have a, a fucking thing to lie about. What are you fucking talking about? Every fucking fight, there's a new thing that you've convinced yourself no, is a lie. I said to you, you Amber, tell Travis what you just did. Did you just fucking, <laughs> did you punch me in the fucking jaw? Did you fucking kick me? Did you? Uh -huh. Did you? And you wouldn't say a fucking reason. I don't know what oh, you're talking so about. Lied. Never fucking. I see the Never lie. fucking happened. I see the lie. You really should run with this. In fact, maybe you and Travis can like go and like, you know, do a tell all about what a. Hey, what, you stop. know, an investigative stop study. Stop with the attitude, right? Sorry. Stop with the attitude. Sorry. You're getting all bunched up. Sorry. Sorry. Did you catch that emotional shift at the end? I think that may be. One of, if not the fastest one I've seen. Or they might just start crying or break down, but they'll make a lot of accusations. And that reactivity is when you're gonna just, you're gonna see a lot of this escalation in the bizarre behavior. They can react violently. They can react aggressively. They will often physically prevent their partner from trying to leave if their partner wants to get space from all of this intense emotion. And oftentimes they will uh, be abusive to their partners in these situations. Sometimes they'll physically restrain them from leaving and become injured that way. Not by saying I throw pots and pans. Okay, cool. Let's no, talk about everything you do wrong. I'm not the one who fucking did that. I don't fucking. I didn't. So that makes so that makes sense. So that I, that's no. clear. Yeah. Do I do the only time I ever threw anything at you was when you fucking are you, threw the cans at me in Australia. Why are you trying to justify who throws things? Based because on whether or that, not you come knocking on the door. I don't because get that is a fucking irrational either. and violent fucking maneuver. How so a man would want to other? get out of that area so that he doesn't get so fucking angry that he actually does pop the fucking wife. Uh, how does one inform the other? Oh, man. Go home and listen to the tape. But also, people with borderline personality disorder... It seems to be a predictive factor for women who implement violence against their partner. And one of the most common tactics that they'll use is actually physically assaulting and then getting harmed themselves. But mostly um, we call this administrative violence. So essentially this is saying that they'll make threats using the legal system. So another pretty long clip here but i think it's a very good example of the administrative violence or threats that dr curry talked about it's not about that it would not be about me throwing you under the bus you know what it would be it would be released through documented people coming on the record and having the protection to do so that haven't had yet it would be eyewitness statements it would be evidence tons of it and it would be through years and it would be unbelievable unbelievable um to imagine that either i'm in a, a secret fake club or b i've had um a secret what i've had a secret fight club or that i have been plotting to do this for the you know for three years and while well, taking pictures of it and documenting it just saving it up for the right time when i'm not asking for any money and have nothing financial to gain from it but no one is going to believe that no one is going to believe that one of the two alternatives either i'm in a fight club or i've been getting going through hair and makeup or going through makeup through all these years where i have cooperating text messages between people that match those dates of those time stamps validated photos of of i would either cooperation between people hearing us or cooperation of next day, you know, um, Whitney sending text message to Kevin, him responding, or, you know, the kind of stuff like between uh, uh, me and people in your life. I, it is insanely cross-cooperated, uh, cross then. It, it is a plan. I'm going to put makeup on myself and take pictures throughout years and just sit on it for years. That, that, well, while having this like imaginary life run parallel to it, do you understand that I, the pictures I have match with like text messages to my mom back and forth about it, you know, and text messages between say Raquel and my, my mom or my, Raquel and my dad or, you know, um, between my two friends. Now to give her props, I do think the secret flight club was pretty creative. I thought that was creative. They might say that they are going to file a restraining order or claim abuse, or they might do these things to essentially try to keep their partner from leaving. In the moment, 
again, they're not consciously thinking, I'm going to keep my partner from leaving right now. They're just thinking, I can't stand this. I hate my partner. They went from idealizing to suddenly devaluing because of the hurt. And they'll do anything to express that big emotion of anger. Warning, another long clip incoming, but this one is an important one. Text message where I tell Jody the night before I had that James Corden night show thing. Where I say, hey, Jody, um, I've had an accident. Um, I think I may have a, I have a busted lip. I may have a busted nose and, and um, two black eyes tomorrow because I don't I don't know that will be into the morning and we may have to cancel, but I don't go out. I'm icing it. Um, I just, I'll let you know in the morning, you know? And things like that. It, it doesn't matter. There is nothing there. Nothing. And I will, and all of that won't be me throwing you under the bus. That's, that's, that will be evidence in this case. Which I will have, it will be criminal as well because I cannot go on Friday and file without filing a police statement first. And the only reason I haven't filed that police statement, which has been used against me, by the way, every day, and the only reason I won't do it, I haven't done it, is because I don't want to hurt you, and that means it goes out of my hands. And every, you know, the third party guy, uh, third party prosecutor come, and, um, and a criminal lawyer come, and they went, like, the problem is, hearing from you, like, your biggest struggle is that this is just, this is such a, it's the most solid evidence case of domestic violence I've ever seen, and if you give this over to them or present any part of it, it's, they will prosecute him, and I felt like, I, I, I'm not, like, I would never want that for you. Because I don't even, it's hard for me to even understand, I don't call myself, I'm just like, it's not in my head, it's hard for me to even accept any sort of victimdom ever. And this, Amber, this listen, here's what I, here's, I, here's, I, I, I understand, I understand, and I don't want to hurt you either. This is by far one of the more controversial aspects of this case, this James Corden appearance by Amber. So I'm going to add a little bit of extra information here. So I will show the images that Amber took of herself showing herself beat up. I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. And then showing herself fine or with a really good makeup job. That's that's your choice and the jury's. Does this picture accurately depict you in, in, in the scene portrayed? I think this is a couple days later, but yeah. Okay. I'm going to move the admission of defendants 513. No objection. All right, 513 evidence. And could you tell the jury what this is and what it depicts? This is um, my face um, with um, a busted lip, which it's difficult to see in this picture, but um, my two black eyes, one is worse than the other. In the movie, you play a ballerina. Did, uh, you, did you study ballet? Did, could you already do it? I, mm, no. No, pretty <laughs> much the opposite. I grew up, you know, in Texas, riding horses and... Big ballet community out there in mm, Texas. No, 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 not so much. Shooting guns, yes, but ballet, no. <laughs> so I wanted to train for it, and there were some ballet sequences that, that um, we wanted to have the option to, to incorporate into the movie, so I trained. All right, so that is the pictures from the court case and the video footage from the James Corden show. So what do you think? That temper it's often branded or being hot headed is really characteristic of borderline personality disorder. Um, as is their ch very charming personable nature. It's, it's, this is a disorder of contradictions. Because God, did he just hit me? No, I didn't want to leave him. I didn't want this to be the reality. I didn't want to have the man I was in love with. I know you don't come back from that. You know, I'm not dumb. I, I know you can't hit a woman. I, you can't hit a man. You can't hit anyone. You can't just hit somebody because they... I knew there was no... I knew it was wrong, and I knew that I had to leave him. I said to you, hey... Tell Travis what just happened. Are you, oh, you telling careless? me to do it? You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, t tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing and you, you in the off. face. And you said, no, fuck it. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? 
and I, I watched you lie, you. and then I, didn't I punch you. And by the I, way, you. I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you, uh, uh, punch hit me. you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you, babe. You're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, even a lot of fights been around a long time. I know. No, yeah, no I, when you fucking have a closed I fist. Didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. you can't I don't know deck what you. the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are your toes? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? How are your I, toes? I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. Oh, That's you, the difference you between me toes. and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you start you physical are fights? You're a baby! Because you, the fuck up, because you start me. physical fights? I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. I know that second clip was pretty long, but did you catch the contradiction there? I am confident you did. In Nurse Filotti's notes, um, she had, I thought there was something interesting. She references a night when they're out to dinner, I believe in London, and she provided positive reinforcement to Ms. Hurd because Ms. Hurd had been uh, disappointed by a mistake made by the server and it sort of references how previously she might have criticized the server or be, become upset by that um, and that she didn't this time. And so that that had been some a sort of a, a step forward. I st struggle to have the words. People with borderline personality disorder can be very caring in their relationships. As long as their needs are being met, they feel that their needs should be met when they want them met um, at a specific level. And if they're not, then that anger, that sense of harm causes them to react. So I will admit to some editing here, but I found that Amber talked a lot about all of the things that Johnny bought her, her friends and her family. Just lavish gifts and lavish expressions of love and things like that. He gave me a few really beautiful poetry books and uh, he gave me a bicycle. He sent me a beautiful dress, gorgeous, expensive, what I can only assume are expensive, um, collectible books, some guitars, trip in, in the Bahamas, a private island. Really, they were beautiful in design. Um, he was giving my dad gifts. He gave him guns. He gave him knives. I mean, Johnny just really just showered my dad amazing gifts and being invited to come on to these locations. And he gave my mom jewelry, brought her out to come and see me. He gave her this beautiful turquoise necklace and overly generous almost, you know, like showering you with gifts and compliments and just, I mean, like, you know, and he has access and means to really, you know, we're not talking about giving you a card. So the instability definitely translates to their relationships. You'll see relationships start very intensely. It just felt very intense, but we weren't doing normal life stuff. We weren't like stuck in traffic with each other. We weren't going to the grocery store and doing life. We were like, hiding in these places around the world. He had a lot of, he has so many homes. So initially everything seems great, but what occurs is that reality sets in. People are not perfect, even when we have a lot of, in common with them. Um, whereas most of us can accept somebody as a whole, somebody who has a little bit of flaws and still think this is my great friend who always all constantly running late for dinner. The person with borderline personality disorder, things are in these extremes, this black and white, we call it splitting. And so that person goes from being idealized, the perfect person, to dumpster. They are totally devalued. They are the worst friend. They don't care anything about me. I have better people around. And then there will be a repair because the person with this disorder does feel remorseful. I'm telling you, if you, if you lost memory last night of kicking me out the door with the fire hitting me again and you sorry. and your memory is gone from uh you kicking the the bathroom door and, and hitting me in the skull as i was bent again. down I wait sorry if you have those memory uh uh, uh, uh fucking, you know di divots i was upset there was a lot wait, going on okay, and i was in wait, an ambient like why wait. why are you obsessing over the fact that i can't remember it the way you remembered it i said i was sorry okay, i didn't deny I it that. i'm not talking about that what I but over time it wears away at these relationships and so what you'll usually see is 
many, many transitions in their friendships over the years, people who have sort of fallen by the wayside. You'll also see that with their intimate relationships, many, many relationships, but none that are particularly long-term. With histrionic personality disorder, that underlying drive is to always be the center of attention. Because if you don't have that attention on you, it feels similarly to borderline personality disorder. You feel pretty empty. Like you don't have that sense of being or of value. I don't know how to get my um, reputation back. The moment your attention wears away because they're so demanding for attention, that's when they might take the victim role or the princess role and even make up stories. Sometimes those stories are to bolster the victim role. Sometimes those stories are just to make them look more interesting or accomplished in their mind so that they can get respect and attention that way. So I chose this next clip from the trial because as Amber's telling the story, Johnny has an involuntary body language reaction when she mentions the glass table. He kind of looks off to the side as people often do when they hear something that is not true or that they do not believe. At one point, Johnny just shoves me like, I mean, just shoves, shoves me hard. And I fall back onto this glass table. Um, I catch myself on the table. Um, I don't know how some furniture got knocked around. There was a, you know, I, I, I'm trying to stand up for myself. I'm trying to stand up, literally. I'm not, you know, at this point, I don't even try to hit back or try to run. I'm in this hotel room trying to do my best to fight mostly the verbal accusations, but also I try to stay on my feet, you know. And sometimes you'll have more of a petulant version of this where it really shows when you push the button and you're kind of, whoa, what was that? So somebody who's really productive, high functioning, successful, and you get to know them and you think they're fantastic because they're so interested in you too. And you might not realize it, but they're mimicking you perfectly. So you're really just kind of falling in love with this new friend who is being you. I loved you for so many fucking years, but you know what? You didn't exist. You don't exist. You're not there. You're not there. You were a fucking made up thing in my head. Um, but then all of a sudden, uh, you know, you say something that they think is offensive and you can't in, even in your wildest thoughts, understand how that could have offended somebody, but their reaction is so strong that you kind of buy into it. Gosh, maybe I did say something offensive and it's not to get you mad. It's not to get, it's just to get out of a bad situation while it's happening before it gets worse. In Australia, when we had the big fight where I lost the tip of my finger, at least five bathrooms and two bedrooms I went to. Two, two. To avoid talking to me. To, to avoid escape, the, out. That's to the, escape the fight. You don't escape the fight. You escape the solution. No. You escape the solution. No. You s escape figuring it out. We cannot work it out if you run away to the bathroom every time. Listen to me. Listen to me. A boxer can't go 12 rounds without a fucking minute break. I'm not not giving you a minute break. You do it at minute three at the beginning of an argument. No. There are rounds, man. And when it gets too fucking hairy, the ref splits them apart or whatever. But I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is you, 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 you can't have a solution if the argument just keeps mounting and mounting and mounting and mounting. I fucking go to the, into the bathroom and sit on the floor. Bam, bam, bam. Here you come. I come out. Fight, fight, fight. Crazy. Escalated. I go I split again. I go to another fucking bathroom or a bedroom or something. Knock, knock, knock. Bang, bang, bang. You kept coming to get me. Johnny was then asked in the courtroom basically what he thought of that clip. And his answer is ultimately why I included it. Very much the tone and the aggression and the attitude um, and the need for a fight from Ms. Heard. That was, 
I don't know if that was some need for attention, but um, I don't. It, that 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 was that was a sound that I had gotten very used to. What I can testify is that there was no indication of a decline in psychological functioning showing any injury since she's been with Mr. Depp. Well, team, that is it. That is the end of the Dr. Curry trilogy of videos. I sure hope you enjoyed them, maybe found them informational as well. If you did, please consider subscribing and definitely sharing the videos with the human people of the world that you know. Please also let me know what you thought in the comments and what other types of videos you'd like to see, and we will catch you in the next video. Thank you. Crushing Defeat Media.